YouTube intro time. Uh, hey everyone, Wandering Bard here, and joining me today are my two friends, Abox SMB and Winter VA. This is the Pokemon Coliseum Hardcore Nuzlocke Encounter Tier List Community Version. So I made a video like this a while ago where I ranked the encounters. Winter, did you ever did you ever watch that video? I can't remember if I did. I'm sorry. No, no worries, no worries. Abox watched it and he had some um thoughts on the rankings I made. He had some problems with some of them. So I figured the most the fairest way to do this would be to get you two in here since all three of us have now done hardcore Coliseum Nuzlocks and we could just hash out together what the rankings would be. So remember, those of you watching at home, these are the most objective and fair rankings you can find on the internet, and you are legally not allowed <laughs> to have a complaint about them. And That's true. Yeah, let's, let's get started. Okay, so starting with our starters, Espeon and Umbreon, I think we can all agree that these are pretty S-tier starters, hey? Yeah, both of them are S-tier, definitely. Hey. I would, yeah, I would, I, would, I would also agree. I mean... When we get like later in the list, we can like hash out where like Umbreon and Espeon sit specifically. Yeah, but... I do want to order S tier. So who, where who would <laughs> yeah. we put above what now? Because Umbreon just doesn't know how to die, but Espeon can one shot so much of this game by itself. It's incredible. Okay, I'm. I will say my runs of this game have gotten me overly attached to Espeon, so I don't think I can make like an impartial judgment. I've been overly attached to Espeon since the Latios and Latios movie, so I can't make a fair judgment on this one either. It's my favorite Pokemon, so... Um, I mean, to be honest, I would just agree with both of you. I think Espeon probably just sits over Umbreon right now. Um, uh, yeah, I just think the value of having like a really fast special sweeper is really good, especially in a game where like the it's, mons have like such potential for sweeping. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a fast special sweeper that also gets access to a move to heal itself and psych up. Yep. Yeah. Although psych up only matters if you get meta if you get the meta cham, hey? That's true, although I could also see it being used with like amnesia on Quagsire. Mm. Or with Dragon Dance just for the extra speed buffs. That too, yeah. If you agility, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's so many agility sweepers in this game, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Alright. So what's everyone's thought on Hariyama? What do y'all think of this guy? Okay, so before my Nuzlocke, I, my winning attempt, I would have said F tier, but I think I'm confident in saying C tier just because Vital Throw is really good for utility. Mm. But otherwise, it's just sort of incredibly boring to use. It has the of all of of the like four fighting types you get in the game. Just the fact that it has Cross Chop gives it the second highest damage dealing potential behind Metacham. And that's because Metacham has pure power. A box. What are your thoughts? Uh, I personally would actually put this somewhere like mid low B tier. I um, I originally had an A tier in my first list. I think I'd argue myself down to a B because Makuhita is useless. Yep. But Hariyama yeah. good. <laughs> I just think out of the three fighting types that you get, like Hitmontop, on top, Hariyama, Metacham, this is the only one that actually gets to utilize like fighting moves safely with a like vital throw or whether you're gonna like yeah yeah unless unless you're up. willing unless you're willing to risk pyrite coliseum yeah yeah you, you yeah. know all about uh losing a bunch of pokemon to pyrite coliseum wouldn't you i uh, know i would no i wouldn't that was a <laughs> uh, vision that never happened sure That's sure cool. yeah yeah that was pyrite, that what, what was your excuse that was demo footage that i gave uh, yeah you. that was that was your that was your footage <laughs> that was my attempt 15 on my casual run so yeah there we go <laughs> Hey, Winter, what what are your thoughts? I want to hear your thoughts on this guy. I want to hear your thoughts on Meganium, because Meganium, you got Meganium in all three of your attempts of this of this game in general, right? That is true. Um, after having completed this Nuzlocke technically twice, but only once hardcore, Meganium is easily S tier. Just hey. it, it gets such good weather control, and weather control is huge in a game where the AI yes. will spend an entire turn using Rain Dance on both their Pokemon. Yeah. Being able to, especially because it's slow, this is one circumstance where it being slow actually helps a ton. You can just stall out Ein by having Meganium use Sunny Day every turn. Mm. 
That's Able. the strategy I've used myself like multiple times. <laughs> See, uh, I... no, you you go yeah. on. Okay, yeah. I mean, the thing is, Meganium isn't that slow. I think it's like 80 base speed, but you can make it slow, like a Macho Brace, and that can be very useful for like slow sunny day stuff, like you were mentioning. Uh, yeah, honestly. Macho brace. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, I forgot when exactly you get the Macho Brace. It's after Mirror B. Uh, it's after Mirror B. Okay, yeah, so honestly, it's pretty early. Um, because you don't even get access to weather setup before before Mirror B anyway, so yeah. perfect timing for that kind of item. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fully in. I was I was afraid that my S tier Meganium would be controversial, but like so many major battles have a, a water ground synergy. Also, that having a super bulky grass type Pokemon is not yeah. bad at all. I honestly, yeah. I also, I underestimated how useful it would be against Dakim too. Yeah. Just because Dakim, you you look at him and you think, oh, he has a lot of fire types, but no, he only has Camera Up and Ente. And Meganium sort of bodies the rest of his team defensively. True. Yeah, it's like Camera Up and Ente, and then like Flygon has like Flamethrower, and even then it has like 80 base special attack. Does, like does it? Let me check real quick, because I don't remember it having. Future editing me can display Flygon stats on screen too, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure I completely agree with S tier. Like, I would personally put it in, like, high, mid-A tier. I can definitely settle for, like, low S tier, because I... this thing is just so bulky, <laughs> and it, like, heals off with synthesis, and, like, mm. surprisingly, synthesis good too. surprisingly, it doesn't run into that many, like, of its weaknesses. Um, really don't. Aside from maybe, like, Nascor, and then, like, I guess, like, Dakim. But only like two of his Pokemon. Yeah, See, I, I can't. As Blaziken is so irrelevant because Espeon exists on your team, and mm -hmm. Meganium can actually tank Ice Beams from Wall Drain and then fire back Giga Drain or Solar Beam. It's it's awesome. I think Meganium is the most useful before Tower Coliseum. Mm. Yeah, I I would agree with that for sure. I think actually during Tower Coliseum does struggle a little bit. Like, I, yeah, because there's. <laughs> There, I think it's good the last Nascar. trainer is like exclusively fire types. Third trainer, fourth trainer is grass. So True, still doesn't right. still doesn't work super well, but yeah. A box, talk to me about Typhlosion, because you're Typhlosion's biggest biggest defender in this group, I think, and I'm the biggest critic. So talk to me about, about Typhlosion. Where would you put it? I would actually put it in A tier. Like, probably low mid A tier. Um I just think, in general, having a fire attack is useful. I know the argument that, like, a lot of the boss matchups are not great <laughs> for Typhlosion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think probably one of the parts where Typhlosion shines the most, where I find that people usually don't have, like, clear answers for, is, like, uh, the lab scientists that like like to spam thunder with like their magneton. Mm -hmm. um, especially Definitely. if you don't if you don't have a ground type like Pillow Swine, or if you don't encounter like Pillow Swine, Ligar honestly really isn't that. Or we'll get to this later. We'll but Gligar, I think yeah. that being yeah. said, I think Typhlosion is one of the best Pokemon for that area specifically. Yeah. Um, it's also really useful for just getting out of tricky situations for with, like random trainers because Stab Flame Wheel is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe you get flamethrower through level up. I might be wrong on that though. I it does get it through level up, but I think it's pretty late. We can it's check. Like you get most it from the, starters. You get it from the mount battle as well. Uh, I guess yeah. the reason I have been having to use Quilava because of the soul link. It has been useful having the coverage, but I feel like in boss battles it sucks so much. Except specifically against Venus round one, because it's I think the only thing that can outspeed and one shot her Steelix. I would yep. put it in B, so Winter, I'll let you cast the deciding vote on that one, but I'd personally put it in B, just because in random battles, it's fine. In boss battles, it almost universally is terrible for the same reasons why Meganium is good. That's my argument. So, I think I would put it in A personally, but this is speaking as someone who has only used Typhlosion in a casual, like, non-Nuzlocke setting. Nice I think... Version. Like you've said, it's not very good for boss fights, but there are so many non-boss fights in this game, and just having an option to easily deal with Magnemite and Magneton in a Shadow Pokemon Lab is huge if you yeah. don't get a ground type. Or a fighting type is good too, like Hitmontop is really good for that area I found. If you can get yeah, a fighting type move than freaking triple kick. Purple miss. Yeah, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> 
definitely. Uh, I think fighting types are good there, but I'd, I'd prefer Typhlosion just because Flame Wheel is significantly more reliable than 80% of the fighting type moves you'll have by that point. Okay. Like Vital Throw is obviously reliable, but I think Hariyama can get hit multiple times in a turn and there's so many exploding Pokemon there. Fair enough. Fair enough. I've been outvoted on that one. I'll, I'll bite that one. On the, I'll bite the bolt on that one. Uh, Are you ordering, like, uh, the tiers? I'm going to order like... S tier. I don't know if we'll order the others or not. I might, but we can, we can see okay. about it. We might we might just do it very loosely for most tiers, I guess, and we just do be really specific with ordering S tier. I would rank Feralgator in A tier above... Typhlosion, because having a water type in the early game is really super useful. And I don't know, I put it for Alligator, I think I put it lower before because I'm used to the fact that you're almost certainly going to get a water type Pokemon in the Pyrite building, but for runs where you don't, for Alligator, not bad. It's got better special attack than Quagsire at least, and it's more reliable than like Quillfish late game. So I'd, I'd put for Alligator a solid A. But definitely no higher. What y what do y'all think? I do not have any experience using this Pokemon in the past like 10, 15 years, so I'll take your word for it. I like seeing it high up because that's what my best friend would want. I get you. A box? Yeah, I mean it's definitely the best user of Surf in the game. Yeah, um out of two. No, Quilfish has Surf, out of three. I think it just has solid like base stats overall. Uh it would be so much better if this wasn't like it. Ha it's built as a physical water type when there's no physical water type moves in this generation. That's yeah. something that a lot of Pokemon in Colosseum suffer from uh, is the fact that it's a Gen three game. The <laughs> only I I could see where you're coming from with that. That's not like a whole other conversation though. Well, we um, could make another video on that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, A tier yeah, one. Cool. Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. Out of the water types, it's definitely one of the better ones. Yeah. Okay, so again, I think the next question is, where in S tier are we putting Quagsire? <sighs> I'll put it below Espeon and above Umbreon. Okay. I I lost it too early to really say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you a cacnea cacnea needle arm existed. I yeah, that was a brain fart for me. But I would tend to I'd agree with a box on that one. Yeah, because Quagsire as well. Quagsire with damp would go below Umbreon. Quagsire with water absorb goes above Umbreon for sure. Yeah, I think access to amnesia is huge. Mm. And so then, like, you know, also the fact that. that it's its only weakness is grass. So as long as you keep it out of the way of, I don't know, maybe Cacnea, uh, it's <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah, Venus true. And, Wild Bloom, and, like, that's it, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. there's not many grass-type enemies in this game. The fact yeah, that it's, certainly the, only, no it's Cacnea. the only Pokemon you get in this game that learns Earthquake by level up, and that alone puts it in S tier. Yeah, That's well, true, because you don't have to use the TM. Also one of the only Pokemon that gets Rain Dance by level up. I level forgot level about level. that, yeah, but you, you are guaranteed a Rain Dance TM and Fennec and Fennec Coliseum. But I mean, there are a decent amount of water types, so you can just use the Rain Dance TM on something else, because you know this, what Quagsire learns at it. The synergy Whatever is good, yeah. And it's also just a great game. switch into a lot of bosses because water types are so common in Colosseum for your opponents. If you have water absorb, if you have damp, its special defense kind of sucks and it takes neutral damage from water, but even so, it's not Yeah, I, anything I say about Quagsire generally is assuming it has water absorb. <laughs> yep, and that's what we're ranking it on, so that, that works for me. Alright, I think we can also just put this in there right off the bat. We don't need to talk about um, that, I think. I think it can go in F just because I hate Slugma's name. Yeah, because <laughs> like every single twelve-year-old on the internet makes like makes jokes about it. Yeah, I, well, I, I, I make that. I make the jokes too, for what it's worth. I just also hate it. Okay, well, that, that <laughs> I hate works. that it brings me to that level. Und understandable. I would hate that too. Um, um yeah, I I actually put it in D here for the same reason that I want to keep Typhlosion in A tier because it's good into like three fights but it's pretty good into those three fights with Flamethrower. I think we've got two votes for F tier though. I'm cool with F tier, it's fine. I'm not <laughs> okay. going to defend this to death. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Winter, talk to me about Ampharos, because Ampharos was kind of a hero for you during attempt one of your Colosseum Nuzlocke. Okay? It was. Ampharos is, and I'm going to pronounce it Ampharos, it is a... I mean, Electric is just all around a good type. Mm -hmm. It's only weak to ground, and it hits most types neutrally. Uh, but on top of that, early access... In fact, access in general to Thunder Wave is really good, mm -hmm. uh, especially in a game where Shadow Pokemon, you're trying to catch them without sustaining I'm casualties them. from them yeah. spamming Shadow Rush, or them killing themselves with Shadow Rush. Mm -hmm. um, I also think early access to Thunderbolt as soon as you purify it is also huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's something... I don't know, speed is also just an interesting stat in doubles, because... The Pokemon that are slow actually have like an inherent benefit to a certain extent. Okay. I don't know. See, I, I, I have a I have a lot of incoherent rambling Pokemon, but I think it's just really good because of its typing. Its low speed doesn't really affect it too much. Access to Cotton Guard is also really nice. It doesn't have Cotton Guard. Cotton Guard doesn't exist oh, wait. in this game. You're right. I'm thinking about later gen- I'm thinking about Gen 5, I think. That's okay. Cotton Spore. Uh, you have as Cotton Spore, which cotton also spore. has a use, but for us yeah. it's just worse Thunder Wave. Like, yeah. Yeah. What tier? Okay. Well, I think I'd probably put it in either high B or low A. I would put it in B max because, like, I, the reason I would put Ampharos a little bit lower is that you're guaranteed plus all in this game, so you're already guaranteed an electric type, so I would normally prefer a different Pokemon just for the coverage. But it's still a solid Pokemon, but I, I don't think it goes higher than B, personally. Hey, Box, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I have mixed opinions, because, like, I actually do like this Pokemon in context outside of Colosseum. I think in Colosseum it's also fine. Mm -hmm. I just think it does struggle to shine in a lot of these matchups. Um, Especially in a game where Protect Earthquake is a strategy that so many bosses use. Yeah, and that you also it. want to be able to use. Gonzo yeah. Uses it. Um, like, it might be useful. It well, it is kind of useful into iron. Uh, it is useful on iron. I can yeah, I one. And then if you figure out like just kill the Rhydon in I two, iron two, it can be useful there as well. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think I probably agree with high B tier, honestly. Okay. Yeah. I would. I would. I would say that's that's a decent place. Stab Thunderbolts is really nice to have though yeah, yeah i was gonna that's something i was gonna say is pokemon that can hit hard with electric type moves in this game are very scarce but imagine yeah. something that can hit hard with electric type moves and also do it quickly and have agility baton pass support to be I able think, to support your pokemon i'd put plus I a tier i i won't begrudge you this because I've only ever used Plusle as like an intentional sacrifice. Yeah, you just but kill I, it against Scrub. <laughs> yeah, because it's funny. But I will also say, I think saying Plusle hits hard with electric type moves is a little bit of an overstatement. I, uh, it, it electric type them. moves hit hard and Plusle has them. That might be a better way to put it. Yeah, maybe maybe if Shadow Minin was in the game, but... Ah, uh, yeah, because they almost put that in, right? Yeah, it, it it's literally they just cut it for no freaking reason. I think even early on, like myself, I tend to overrate. I tended to overrate how good electric type moves like were in this game. Honestly, if you like look at a lot of this stuff, like electric doesn't really hit into super effect that many things for like super effective damage. You can. I guess, like, NASCORs, like, Wall Rain is a big threat, does well into that. Um, well, even that, you get so many fighting types in this game anyway. Exactly, though. there's like, so many other solutions for these Pokemon that aren't, like, electric types necessarily. Yeah. I just, and I guess it's just true in general, but... There, there's just a lot of situations I can think of where I was thinking, wow, I want an electric 
type, and I don't have one. <laughs> it hits the two most common types in the Pokemon universe for super effective damage, which is what makes it good. If I could move plus of down to like high B tier, if y'all if y'all push him back against the A tier, I could just we could just put it here above. If Hariyama. we're ordering, if we're ordering the tiers, like all, I of think them, we definitely put Ampharos above. I put Plusle above Ampharos just because you're guaranteed Plusle, so like you don't want Ampharos as much. I guess that actually makes a little bit of sense. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot to say here because even if I were to accept that Plusle is like usable in this game, I'd still just sacrifice it to Scrub because it's funny. Okay, yeah, you don't get nothing done. <laughs> uh, Mistrevus. Who, who wants to talk about Mistrevis? Because I can talk about this. Talk about Mistrevis. Uh, Levitate is very good. Ghost type is very good. Uh, mm. Early access to Shadow Ball is very good. Mm. Unfortunately, this is a Gen 3 game, so Shadow Ball is physical and Mistrevis doesn't get the best use out of it. But True. just because of how god awful the ai is in this game i think mischievous is by default at least b tier i would i actually would put it in either a or s tier and the only reason i wouldn't immediately put it in s tier is because while defensively it's the best pokemon in the game because it has three immunities offensively it adds nothing to your team that you don't already have from espion umbreon it has some good utility but it adds no offensive type coverage so i'd put it at like top of a tier but I don't know about S tier, because I feel like if you're doing the Hef rule set where you can pick what your encounter is in that area, you're always going to pick Quagsire and not Mistrevis. So I'd put it like that, top of A tier. I can see that. I'm 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 largely just thinking of somebody who has watched Chugga Conroy for so long and just remembering the way Mistrevis broke the game when he let's played it. Yeah. A box, what are your thoughts? I think you have you have the vote because I put it high A tier, Winter put it B tier at least. What are your thoughts? I would like put it in low A tier personally. I think it's definitely very good in the fact that it has three immunities. It has great synergy with Earthquake in a game where you want to use that <laughs> yeah. move a lot. True. Slash is being used a lot on you. Um a lot of the Boss Pokemon do have strong normal type moves, specifically like Evis with like Salamence, like, Salamence like Double Edge, Slack and Crush Claw. Crush Claw. Good pivot, um, yeah. A lot of Earthquake. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually position. it's it is a great switch. Now that I'm th yeah, do we want to put it switch. above? Uh, who do we want to put it above? Above above Typhlosion or above Feraligatr or where, where are we putting this then? I think I'd put it above Typhlosion. I don't think I'd put it above for Alligator. I think yeah. it's just does not have like many offensive capabilities at all. You could probably put like the Psychic TM on it. And you I could think get Pain Split. <laughs> you could take advantage of it being like Pain not the most soon. offensive with Pain Split. Parish you... Song is okay. For this thing to even get good use out of Shadow, main draw of it offensively, at least like immediately and obviously, you have to like spam proteins on it at the earliest possible opportunity. You kind of do, yeah, that's the unfortunate bit. Yeah, it's here it is. Uh, this attack is uh, not doing it much favor, to be honest. Yeah. Man, if only this game wasn't Gen 3. Yeah. True. Uh, Jump Pluff. I would put Jump Pluff in like low B tier. I think it's got good utility, but it's just worse Meganium IMO. There's a line that I want to try with that's mm. useful, but I'd put it in like low B tier just because it's worse Meganium. I don't necessarily agree. I think I, w I would still put it in like low B or even C tier, I think, but having high speed and access to Stun Spore is just. Does it it get gives stun it a spore? niche. It, gets it does get Stun Spore. Either way, it's still good. It's a niche that it would not get in other games. In mm. other games, if you say, oh, it's fast and it can use Sleep Powder, you can name like any other Pokemon that gets that same benefit. Okay. I think I'd rank Jump Bluff higher in this game just because it has a niche. Okay. Uh, A-Box? It actually doesn't get Stun Spore, and it also doesn't get each seed. Which, which is a shame. Want, which it would definitely make me rank this Pokemon higher. It does have Synthesis. Which is nice. The only problem 
because this Pokemon is a little too frail for it to use it like very effectively. Except actually, especially it's pretty good. Uh, Special defense isn't bad, yeah. Uh, yeah. Defense is okay too, actually. I mean, it is an okay user of Census, I suppose. Uh, I mean, this thing's offensive capabilities are pretty terrible, although I guess you wouldn't be using this Pokemon for that. That being said, I think comparing this thing directly to Meganium is not very fair because it does yeah. have an Isha flat, fast sleep powder, which is nothing. Mm. It's nothing good else utility. Has, any, has anything like that. Uh, yeah, I, that that was my main point. Is I just think it's flawed to say it's worse Meganium. Okay. I it can, has I a specific that. niche that Meganium would be better if it could fill. Yeah. Noct I put Noctowl at least B just specifically because you really want a flying type before Mirror B with how few options you have for that fight. And Noctowl in the early game is better than Swablu. As soon as you can purify a Pokemon, Swablu becomes better. But Noctowl I think goes in a solid B tier. I can agree with that. I don't have, yeah, no notes. Who wants to talk about Yanma? <sighs> C or D, do you reckon? I think I'd put it in C. After... Okay, so, <laughs> when I got Yanma, my thought was... Oh yeah, was, you did get one. <laughs> my thought was, wow. This is maybe the worst possible encounter here. I think but it is. Looking back on it, I think I'm glad I got it over Remor Raid just because I think I used Compound Eye Supersonic twice and it was nice. Okay. And Speed Boost uh -huh. Yanma, not terrible either. It gets like hardly any good utility, but Speed Boost, not bad. Compound Eye, it's not bad. I think C is a fine ranking for this Pokemon. I think so. I think if it got access to Baton Pass in this game, Speed Boost would be a lot better. True. You already get like three Pokemon in this game with Agility Baton Pass, two of which are guaranteed Pokemon. So Yanma, I, I feel like Yanma would not go up a tier if it had that, because like you don't need that on Yanma. I agree to an extent, but I think just on the grounds that it is like one of three encounters in Pyrite Building, four if you count Quillfish. I'd rather have a speed boost Yanma that can like baton pass after a few battles than a Remoraid that is only good after the upcoming boss. I think A-Box will have things to say about the Octillery because in your successful Nuzlocke attempt, you used Octillery, right A-Box? Tell, tell, tell us your thoughts on this Pokemon. Very, very much so. Yeah, I think Octillery is actually like pretty underrated, I would say. Um, I think... Well, firstly, this is one of the hardest hitting like water types you get in the game. Okay. Uh, it has Bubble Beam, and it has by far the highest special attack out of anything you get, if we're not counting Suicune, and I think even then, Suicune's is still lower. I'm not exactly sure on that, but that isn't relevant. Suicune doesn't um, hit very hard, hard. it's more screen. of a bulky Pokemon. Um, I think Octillery has crazy versatility. I think uh, we're talking about like... It has answers to like a lot of things that you might not think. Like it gets access to flamethrower, it gets access to ice beam, like a lot of other water types. Wait, it gets it flamethrower? Yeah, it can. Well, not by level up, but yes, it has. You can you can teach it. That slash fire blast. okay. Well, that automatically changes my thoughts on Octillery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great so, okay, coverage. For like an answer to like Docking's Fortress is a great answer into that. Um, the only thing I holding it back. The only thing holding it back is that you're stuck with a level 20 Pokemon until after you can purify everything. Well, after you purify it. But then after that, yeah. it's great. It's awesome. Yeah, um, where are I you, don't... Where are you ready to I... tier? I want to put this in low A tier. <laughs> low A tier. Okay. Yeah. I think just me... You've sold me on that, I think, just because of the type coverage. Okay. But I'm, I'm not Psychic gets access to... Uh... I think, yeah. To like, Return Psychic... Flamethrower, Fire Blast. The I circumstance see. under which you would want to teach Octillery Psychic terrifies me because it means you would not have Espeon. Yeah, that means you that lost Espeon. <laughs> if you lose Espeon, this is an option. That's what I'm saying. That's true. true. Okay. I'll, I'll I, I, will, I will say, I, I don't want my disrespect of Octillery to come across as disrespect to Octillery. 
All of my disrespect um, towards this Pokemon is specifically towards Remoraid. <laughs> true. I will. I can accept that for sure. I'm gonna steer the discussion for this next Pokemon because I used it extensively in my in my runs. I'm putting Mantine yeah. top of A tier above all the other water types. I think Mantine is such a solid Pokemon and easily the thing that you want most in in Pyrite building. Water Absorb Mantine pretty good. It's got better special defense than Umbreon. It has Bubble Beam. Swift Swim Mantine honestly is super good too because you can make it a, a fast sweeper. I would put Mantine top of A tier personally. I, yeah, I don't have much to say. It's a good user of water moves and it gets Ice Beam. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. Pretty much exactly this placement. A Bubble Beam, oh. Ice Beam. Water Flying is also a good type. Yeah. Confused Ray also has two pretty solid abilities in Swift Swim and Water Absorb. Pretty good. Um, so this piece of crap, I have very harsh feelings towards this Quillfish, because Quillfish is what caused us to reset Soul Link Attempt 1, because this freaking Pokemon does not stay in the freaking Pokeball, and it killed my Espeon after I ran out of Pokeballs, because it set up minimizes and killed, and I couldn't kill it. It sucks so freaking much, I can't even begin to describe my hatred for this Pokemon. It sucks to catch so much, it's not even that great... Like, when you have it, it's fine to mirror B because, like, it resists grass. I mean, it neutral to grass, I suppose. But, like, it has terrible earthquake synergy. It's weak to every one of Dakim's Pokemon, so you don't even want to use it against Dakim, <laughs> which is one of the freaking people that you want a freaking water type for. Like, ah, Why does this Pokemon suck so much? Look, I, I'm going to let you put this where you want. I can... <laughs> you. Hey, Box. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a I don't know want to put it in D tier because like having a water type is useful, but I'm putting it in C tier below Yanma. I hate this Pokemon. Yeah, I will cool say I th I think it's funny that in future generations it gets to explode. Yeah, no, exploding Quillfish sounds hilarious. I would love that to actually make, make it, it better, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It can blow up. It can die. That's what makes it useful. It can freaking die. Like <laughs> it is. It is also one of the very few like decent users of the sludge bomb tm in this game if you're willing to risk it all to get sludge bomb i would also say it's actually one of the better ish users of shadow ball because it has access to that as well it can shadow that okay okay yeah. yeah i i would put this in high like c tier personally i like sucks I, for like so much <laughs> as long as it stays in c tier i'm fine as long as it stays there i'm content yeah, yeah i'm pretty like in C bordering E potentially, but yeah, I'm I'm okay. fine with it above Yanma just because the it's it gets harder. Me. Yeah. Hey, a box. Yep. Do you want to talk to me about your experience using Metatite and hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Coliseum? <laughs> I think yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I think Metatite is not great until you get access to Brick Break, and then... Or Shadow Ball. Just, honestly, or Shadow Ball. These are both at the very end of the game, but it absolutely destroys the end of the game. Like, this thing is so good. Huge power Shadow Ball and Brick Break. Mm -hmm. The attacks do, like, a number into, like, all the major boss fights at the very end. It really does. Uh, it's Put honestly it insane. Do we want to put it in, like, B tier because it's, all, it's useful at the end, but, like, only really useful at the end? I would put it, I would honestly, I would say high B tier is okay. I personally want to put it right, right next to Octillery and low A tier, but depending on what Winter has to say. Yeah, um, Winter, what you got? Uh, I will say I used Metacham in my last run, but I don't think I used it to its fullest potential just because so many of my Pokemon were staying in the back since I had Espeon. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't have much to say about it. I kept high jump kick on it until I boxed it, so... Mm. Yeah, high, high I personally. B, a. I think. That yeah, works. that's. I think that's fine. I personally prefer Hitmontop as a. I prefer Espeon as a psychic type. Yeah, I think I I prefer Medicham over Hitmontop as a fighting type. But as a psychic type, like Espeon, Hitmon, and Medicham can be a decent enough team because Espeon psych up synergizes well with Medicham Calm Mind. That's the. That's other definitely thing. true. The only three moves you need on this are Detect, 
Brick Break and Shadow Ball, like the fourth move slot, you could do like kind of whatever. So yeah, come on, Psycho. Yeah. Or honestly, I'd say you don't even need if you don't put detect, you can do Psychic, Calm Mind, Brick Break, Shadow Ball, and you have a broken Sweeper Pokemon on your team. I, put, I I'll put it in, in low A. I'll put it I'll put it beside Octillery. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly. Like, yeah. I'm Decent. fine having it in A just because catching it is good for Espeon because of the Twisted Spoon. Oh, Ooh. true! Yeah, A tier, A tier it is. Dunsparce? I feel like Dunsparce would go C tier. It has good coverage and it can and it can have Serene Grace, but its stats are not great. It's easily the worst encounter in Pyrite Cave. I'd put it in like C... I don't know if I'd put it above or below Yanma personally. I think... I'd probably I'd put it above Yanma, I think, but I will say I was you know there's an issue with this Pokemon when my first thought was, wow, Game Freak, give this thing an evolution, but then I realized they did and it's still not great. So Yep. I that's all I can think to say. It's works for me. It's it's just dreadfully normal type. Yep. Yeah, I mean it has like really good versatility like so many other normal types do the thing is it has like 70 base attack and that's like yeah <laughs> the that's best true. stab move it gets is takedown which is like bro come on else you put return on it yeah return yeah. i was gonna say but, but if, if I, you're gonna use return on dunsparce you're in trouble you have an issue honestly you could, get, you could give it hyper beam too if you want but yeah uh, hyper beam's very iffy in doubles yeah i would not give it hyper beam unless it was a joke yeah. Just think, I don't know. That's sort of what I meant by dreadfully normal type is that it gets such an incredible move pool, but its stats are just awful. Yep. Yeah. Pretty, pretty bad. Okay, can we all agree that Altaria is at minimum high A tier? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Do Dragon any, Dance? Does I, anyone want to put it in S tier? I would put it in S, personally. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I talk. Will... I'm gonna uh, talk through this. Speak to us, Abox. I want her to go first. All right. I will say, uh, when I used Altaria, I unfortunately lost or was able to use the strategy that I wanted to. But Dragon Dance and Earthquake on the same move set is so good. Yes. Especially on a Pokemon as bulky as Altaria. Yes. I would say my experience with Altaria actually biases me more towards putting this in S tier. I'm trying to be objective about this as possible. I got to a point in one of my attempts where I had three Pokemon left. I had an Altaria, an Umbreon, and an Ariados. By the time I beat Ein, like Ein won. Oh, I got oh no. through all four boss rematches and Gonzap. And like that is mostly thanks to this thing because of its insane move versatility, access to Dragon Dance, the only Pokemon that gets that, I mean, uh, and this, Earthquake. I mean, it's it, it is really really good. You're not it also gonna gets hear Dragon me. Claw. If you, you you don't get the TM for Dragon Claw okay. until the Deep Coliseum, which is post game, it does not get it by level up. It but doesn't. You can, it does I seem not. to remember getting it, but okay. It has Dragon I'm, Claw. Oh, wait. It does not no, have I know Dragon what I'm, Claw. I'm thinking of my old Let's Play. I'm sorry. I'm gotcha. Because <laughs> I did the Deep mm. Coliseum and all. I, I, I mean, it's my second favorite Pokemon, so I'm biased as well, but I think Altaria is super solid. Dra get a dragon type in general is just good. Dragon dancing dragon type is just really good. Great move pool. You can EV train it in whatever stats you quite well feel like and have it work. I would dare to even put it above Meganium just for the better move pool while still having good bulk, but I'd put it below Umbreon personally. I don't... I pretty much agree perfectly just having bulk the ability to ev train that bulk and then dragon dance up anyways and still be strong is insane i think i would be in the minority of this one i'd actually put it around mantine probably because i think it does have great move versatility i just think you'd have to be in a bit of a pinch in order for our for Altaria to like really shine, but that being said, if you are in that pinch, like it is really, really good. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I'm okay with like this low S tier placing. If we want, we can put up the low Meganium if we want to compromise that. I would push yeah. back against having to be in a pinch to let it shine. I feel like you can, build, yeah. you can build your team however you want, and if you have an Altaria, if you just want to make the most use out of it being a good Pokemon, you can build it however well you want. I mean, 
like the fact that a Pokemon can pull through in a pinch is what can make it a good Pokemon for Nuzlocke. So I, I, I don't think you're not arguing me down from S tier with any of this. Is my thought. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm I'm okay with that. Anything I that I'll, I'm gonna say probably isn't gonna push us down to A. So. Altaria yeah. is it's it's very much like a one trick. The coolest trick you've ever seen. Okay. Who wants to talk about Sudo Wudo? It's a guaranteed I do, encounter. I do. Talk about Sudo. Oh yeah, you got the shiny one, right? Talk to, talk to me about Sudo Wudo. Uh, Sudo Wudo is awful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, That's actually not what I was expecting. I okay. am ex look. I am extremely glad that I got a shiny Sudo Wudo because it's just been a dream of mine to get a shiny in Colosseum because it's like a yeah. weird novelty. I don't think Pseudo Wudo did a single thing of note in that entire attempt. It's so slow, its move pool is awful. Like, it's gonna be stuck with Rock Slide as its only rock move for the entire run, which yeah. unfortunately has to deal with being spread damage and inaccurate. And you're slow, so you can't even use the flinch chance properly. Yeah, I think with Quick Claw you can get around that. Okay. So that's removing the hard stone that makes Rock Slide I... like a decent move in the first place. Yeah. I would... It's just such a bad Pokemon. Both of its abilities are pretty bad in the game, too. What? But what uh, does it only. It has what? Ro it's, oh, yeah. Sturdy, it's sturdy stats, or rock Rockhead, head. and it has no payoff off Rockhead. Yeah. It actually does have payoff off Rockhead. Yeah, it gets um, double edge. At the very end, though, it gets double edge at 57, which is like, you would get that before you face, like, Nascor and Evis, but. Only if you edge your Pokemon and then use Sudo Wudo a lot would you get that. The, oh, wait, no, yeah. I forgot. Level 56 is the level cap. Okay, you would get that. 56 is level cap, but you'd still probably need to be leading with Sudo Wudo to get the experience to learn it before NASCAR. Uh, you can switch it in against the fire type yeah. gal. That's the that's the person you get the most use out of it from. Yeah, Sudo Wudo. Yeah, I think that's true actually. Sudo Wudo sucks. I would own I'd put it in D tier and not F just because since it's, it's the only mirror B mirror hideout Pokemon, Angry. you're not getting it instead of something good. It's F it's yeah. much <laughs> it's much better than Mag Cargo, but that's not That's that's no great mastery, yeah. Yeah. I knew we were going to place this low, I don't know we were going to place this that low. I actually don't agree. <laughs> I would put this in C tier. I would put this in C tier above Quillfish, personally. Ooh, I think... Really? Yeah, I mean, it is slow. It's not really that frail, honestly. Even on the special side, it is a pure rock type, which I think is much better than, like, any rock ground type. Oh, I think it's better than a rock ground, I just... Um, it just doesn't it gets access. Much. It's access to Earthquake, definitely a strong user in that. How does it get uh, access? I mean, you can t if you can teach you it, teach earthquake, it earthquake, but yeah. do you want to teach Earthquake to a pseudo Wudo? Like, depends on what you have. I don't know. You only get like eleven encounters in this game. You can lose encounters really easily. So. You get fifteen encounters in this game. Or yeah, I guess the way I play, I get like twelve. But yeah, Wait, you how, get, like, how how do you play? I group pseudo Wudo with the rest of the encounters in Pirate Cave. That just then... makes it, that just, sorry, but if you group it with Pirate Cave, that just makes it worse, because you're getting it and not Metacham yeah. or, <laughs> yeah, or probably does. Probably, yeah. Okay, okay, you would rather have Dunsparce over Sudowoodo. This thing can get access to Brick Break, can get access to Earthquake. Uh, I think that alone would like put this above Dunsparce for sure. That puts it above Dunsparce maybe, but like, so does that mean, Rock do we do we bring like, Dunsparce yeah. down to D T or do we move Sudo Wudo? Like, it's okay if you, I, okay, yeah, that's actually not a bad argument. I don't know. I, I You're making me want to move Dunsparce down is the problem and not making me want yeah. to move Sudo Wudo up. Yeah, I don't want to move Sudo Wudo up, I just want to move farther down now. <laughs> like, what's the justification for Yanma being better than Sudo Wudo? It gets access to Wing Attack at like 43. I mean, it has two I, okay abilities. There's not really. I think we yeah. just put them in C so early that we didn't have an idea of what was on the tier list Here. yet. Let's, let's do this. Let's do, let's do it this fine. way right now. I would personally do it my way, but I'm also okay with this. I'm glad I got some result out of this. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I used Sudo Wudo for the entire run because yeah, honestly, like, we it could, didn't do anything. <laughs> we could put Sudo Wudo bottom of C tier just because, like, again, it's not replacing anything terrible in my rules and in A box's rules. It's still better than Dunsparce, so we we actually could do it this way. 
That I, it's fine with me. I I guess by having it in the party and not using it much, I have more experience with it than I do. I getcha. Mm -hmm. I getcha. Uh, I think Hitmon Top is a solid B tier, in my opinion. It's the only Agate Relic Forest encounter, not Agate Village, it's, but just sort of specifically to Relic Forest. It has Intimidate, it's got good defenses, it doesn't have great offensive capabilities unless you can give it brick break or like i got lucky and it had hidden power fighting so i was able to give it a fighting type move that didn't suck but like i i don't think it would go higher than i don't think it goes higher than b i i would say high b low a uh specifically if you get lucky with hidden power and give it brick break yeah but if you do i think high b low a fits it it was like i got lucky got hidden power ghost which covers its psychic weakness mm, uh, which is pretty good with how high its special defense is too yeah yeah so I, you, niche scenario, but you can I mean, very... this thing also no go yeah, on no 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 i was gonna say this thing also gets access to earthquake which is pretty decent i suppose if you are looking for a pokemon to put that on um yeah the thing is i just struggle to like see this pokemon having any use before like Ein one at the very least. I uh, use it in lab. Game. I used it in lab as a pretty decent option because it, it has detect. Almost. It learns detect as part of its <laughs> move set. Good special defense and with like with Meganium or Quilava by its side, you can pretty easily pierce with the lab. In my in my winning attempt, I started using it in lab because of floating uh, Pokemon. Yeah, uh, that's the other. And thing. because of the Magnemite and the Magneton, I it will is. say. I yeah. think Intimidate automatically puts it pretty high for me just because of how good of an ability it is. And uh, like, yeah, you don't get actually, Gyarados. I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it is one of three Pokemon to get Intimidate. Uh, and Intimidate is huge. It's guaranteed as well. Uh, yeah. Which I think is awesome. And uh, that being said, Intimidate plus Stab Brick Break uh, plus some other like physical move, maybe for like, Return on or something, actually does really, really well into the early game. Or, sorry, end game. Yeah. I think um, my final moveset, I think, was like brick break hidden power ghost protect and like focus energy or something i didn't use the third move so J just having those two offensive options in protect made it like a really good option for tower coliseum okay yeah do we want yeah, to put low a say, tier then i would say i'm actually cool with low a tier i think yeah, the, the value of intimidate and double battles is actually like huge yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all. Who wants to talk about Ledian? I don't think anyone wants to talk about Ledian. Anyone who's D tier it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. Okay. But... Yeah, I agree with this. Yeah. Winter VA. Do you want to talk about your wealth of experience using Gligar in a hardcore Coliseum Nuzlocke? Look. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> the. Sorry, future wandering bird. <laughs> the Dunsparce had Ice Beam, I'm sorry. Actually, wait, hold on. Winter, I want to hear you, what do you, where would you rank Pyloswine as well? You have to tell me about both of these, because Pyloswine okay. ended your career in attempt one. Okay, it, it, so it didn't funny. end my career, it just started the, it just rolled the snowball further down the hill. Well, quite but... literally the snowball, huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, I would say Gligar, I think its typing is really good, but it is yet another victim of this being a Gen 3 game because it doesn't get access to evolving. And it has no good moves. Yeah, it gets Earthquake if it survives through Lab. And I if think, you use the TM on it. Yeah, it, I think it also gets Sludge Bomb, doesn't it? It does, actually. Yeah, yes. I think, yeah. I it's a like... decent user of Sludge Bomb. I think it's good, for, like, if you give it Protect, it can be on, like, maybe the same level as Dunsparce, but I just don't see it doing much else. And you also, that that also means you're keeping it alive up to the point where you're able to do the Under Coliseum. I would dare to put it in, like, either C or B, not on the level of Dunsparce, because its typing is so good. I'll put it in C. Um, it's, it's typing is really good. It has nice. I see. I see is good. Quick. Yeah, I I can live with that. Pilo swine. As much as my brain is telling me to dunk on this thing, uh, 
it's okay. It's a good user of Earthquake if it can survive a turn to use it. Yeah. It's it's but, also the only like it's the only ground type Pokemon subway that gets a ground move before a lab, which is why you want a ground Pokemon in that area for for the lab. So I'd put it above Gligar, but not high above Gligar because its defenses are not good. I think I'd put it above Gligar, but I think I'd still put it in C. Okay, A box. Um. I zoned out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, I, I subscribe to B tier being for Pokemon who have a really good, reliably used niche, but who aren't super useful elsewhere. And, like, I think Pilot Swine fits that description for me. But I think, yeah. actually, yeah, I'm okay with Pilot Swine in low B tier. Uh, I, can, I can see that. This thing has pretty strong earthquakes, I would say. Stab earthquakes is always great. Um, yeah. It's just unfortunate because you get a better user of Stab Earthquake in the next area if Which you is... get lucky, I guess, but... Oh, yeah, we can just do this one right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Stab Earthquake, excellent move cover, like, type coverage with its pool. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So Stantler... It gets Giga Drain. So... It does. So Stantler is next in the subway, and Stantler has the weird... <laughs> duality of being an intimidate user and also being really frail and having limited move pool. So where do we want to put this thing? I think Stantler I think I would put in either high C or low B personally. I can live I think high C. Intimidate is just such a good niche and even in, on a Pokemon as frail as Stantler you can just lead with it and then switch into something bulkier if you get lucky with your encounters again. True. And then you can just do double intimidate too if you get lucky too. Mm. No, you don't even need luck. You're guaranteed hip on top. Remember? Yeah, that's true. So, I would say this, thing is, uh, this thing is probably. I want to say like B tier for me personally, like mid B tier somewhere around there. I think intimidate again is just really, really good. I it think does hit decently hard, especially because you can put, like, Stab Return on it, which is pretty oh, nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stab Return is huge. That's 102 base power at max. Yeah. This is probably uh, the second best user of Return, I would say. Is it behind Granbull? Behind Granbull. Granbull yeah. is the best user of Return, yeah. yeah. So, where are we putting Stantler? Like, somewhere here? I'd put, I'd, I'd, I'd dare to put Noctowl above it, just for you really want Noctowl early. I'd put it here. Uh, put it below I think, uh, I think oh, I'd put it below yeah. Ampharos personally, just because Ampharos is still usable in the late game. True. Stantler, you, you don't want to bring Stantler in the finale. You really just don't. You don't want to have oh. to. <laughs> I, I chose to bring Stantler into the finale, actually, and it did okay. decently well. I think I'm, if you're uh, bringing it, it with him on topic. Yeah, with yeah, hit my top, not bad. Or with Granbull, or yeah, Granbull too. Um, it has access, honestly, to a lot of stuff. Uh, for what it's worth, it's an okay mixed attacker. Has like 95 base attack, 85 base special attack. Has mm. access to a lot of stuff. Psychic shadow. It can ball, learn calm mind. It learns calm mind by level up. It yeah. gets calm mind. That's a great point. It gets calm mind at 49. Has intimidate. Can learn earthquake. Gets stab return. Like I think. Honestly, I personally would put it above every single Pokemon in B tier and put it right at the top. I would just say that like this thing has like very strong move versatility, intimidate plus stab return, plus like maybe another physical move that you might want to use on it. And honestly, I would, I would, I would put it in high B tier. But I, I, if you I, want to put it in low B tier, I'm chill with that. I'll keep it below Ampharos because I think Ampharos has more useful things to set up with, with like the Parasis and such. I'd put, I'll still keep it below Ampharos personally. I think Winter agreed with me on that one. I would dare to say Sneasel is F tier. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, it, it has a niche of being a really like decent user of Hyper Mode Shadow Rush. The thing is, that doesn't really do well into any boss fight, because, like, you just pass Venus. It just and, dies. Like, yeah, no, it's so it's just away. good for, like, the beginning. Yeah, and yeah. I think the fact that, like, it has a niche can justify D tier, so I think that is probably... I don't, 
I don't know like, if I even agree with that. Like, it, it does have a niche. It the niche cannot for be long reliably enough. used. I mean, yeah, I, I would put this in, like, D tier, but if we're gonna put it in F tier, I'm not, like... I, I think I'm fine with D tier just because... I don't know. It, bottom of D, though. <laughs> Definitely bottom of D tier. It would be bottom D. Like, I'd on, yeah, I would even... Like, you could Ladian probably has find... Niche. Yeah, it does have an okay niche. Like... Whatever. I, I would only argue that it goes up one space, and I'm not really gonna... Yeah. That yeah. Right now, so... <laughs> I'd put Ledian above it, because again, Ledian's not replacing anything good Sneasel is. So it's definitely below Ledian. That is true. That is true. Uh, speaking of Pokemon that replace things that are good, Apom! <laughs> it is the third Baton Pass agility user out of three. The other two are guaranteed Pokemon. So you don't ever want this freaking Apom. Like... <laughs> Hey, speaking of creepy Pokemon, Winter, what do you think about the next the next entry on our list here? I don't think I'm allowed to have an opinion because it's literally a leap set. True, or in my rule not. set, I mean. <laughs> I'm not allowed to use it. Hey, Box, what do you think about Ariados? I mean, it's, it's pretty D tier, I would say. Yep, I can agree uh, with that. Get down there. Like, I, I literally made sure that it was illegal in my rule set just so I didn't have to subject mm -hmm. myself to it. Yeah, it's I hate this only, Pokemon. The only poison type they get Sludge Bomb is Purification Set. I what, think is... It's got hard-hitting Sludge Bomb. It does have pretty hard-hitting Sludge Bomb, which I would say puts it above some of these Pokemon in D tier. Um, yeah? I mean, I'd, I'd personally put it below F, so... His agility. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Wait, what, was, <laughs> what was that? Uh, has agility. Oh, does it? Okay. It does, yeah. 50 so it goes, it goes above Yanma. Okay, that's cool. I'm actually okay with that, yeah. I, I would say so. Fortress? I think the only... Uh, Fortress is solid. I wouldn't put it in S because you're already guaranteed... Oh yeah, hold on. Uh, we can agree here, right? Skarmory S tier? Uh, if you yeah. use vitamins on it, yeah. Like low S tier. Like, I'd say just low S. S. Yeah, 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 like right there. Low S exclusively if you use vitamins on it before tower. Yeah. Actually, I put it Altaria, but uh, I, I disagree hard. I'm putting Altaria yeah, above yeah. Altaria. I'm, I'm not gonna fight you <laughs> on the <laughs> putting this above Altaria. So it's got try. synergy with Metal Sound with your with all your special attackers. Yeah, because there are a lot of special attackers in this game. But like, yeah. they're both good. Defensively bulky, defensively typed birds. Altaria just has better coverage and hits harder. That's my thought. And has Dragon Dance again. I mean, yeah, I would say it just is so good in Tevis. Like, it's honestly insane. The only Pokemon that it probably struggles against is like Sloking. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I, it's honestly just insane for that last fight. I just realized that we completely skipped for it when we were doing our rankings. We forgot for it oh. in the Pyrite Town. <laughs> we did, bro. Yeah. Oh, can I can I speak on for it? Speak on for it. Go for it. I think for it could go in like low C, high D. It it's not super good, but it's one of the only Pokemon in the game. Follow me. It does get follow me. It also is the, it's like the highest level shadow Pokemon that you can get be before like the mirror B fight, and it has stab That's like also true. stab strength or stab quick attack. Not bad. Yeah, and along can, with Silk Scarf, especially Silk Scarf is unfortunately oh, after yeah, it mirror has... B. I know oh, that, exactly. but okay. even after mirror B, I'd put it in C. I'd put it in C. I dare I even, even put it above Sudowoodo just because the follow me utility is so good. I would say it's better than. Uh, all these Pokemon to see here probably. Okay, cool. I'll take that. I like I like Furret. I would I think Grand Bull is just better Stantler, right? It, I say it goes somewhere uh, somewhere around where Ampharos is. I personally. I honestly think that's sort of selling it short. Oh, okay. We I think it, it might here. still it might still belong in B tier, but it gets so many good moves to take advantage of its attack stat. Like what? Like A. It gets Return, it gets Shadow Ball, it gets Earthquake, it gets Brick Oh, break. yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, do we want to put it above above Hip on top, then? I... Uh, honestly, probably. 
I I think normal is a good typing uh, generally. Like only being weak to fighting is pretty good, and being a good switch into shadow ball is huge when you're using when you have so often on. too. Yeah. I would actually put this thing around where Hariyama is personally. I just think it's like, yeah, all those things you said honestly justifies this having a relatively high position. This thing is so slow though. It actually has like 45 base speed, which is. It is upsetting. It's to not outspeeding like anything. True, uh, but that like, is true. it hits much harder than hit on top. It does hit harder than hit on top. It also gets uh, stab return, which is big with it its attack stat. Yeah, I mean stab return is always huge. <sighs> I don't know. I I think I think I I think I like hit on top a little more just because it deals. Uh, with some of the bigger threats in the like very end game, a little mm. better with like stab break break, but I think I'm biased on Hitmon top because it was on my win. But I mean, we can I... put it here. Yeah, I'd say it's we'll close between that. them. Yeah, and that, I'll accept that. I can accept that. Fortress, Fortress. I'm putting for. I would put Fortress below. I put it between Mantine and Feraligator personally. I think I agree. <laughs> I I mean, it can explode in a game where very few Pokemon you can catch can explode. Explosion is fun. I mean, it's definitely a steel type. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, only re the only reason I put it not in S is because you're already guaranteed a steel type. So it feels... But it's still good. It's still a good steel type. I think it also fills a very different role than Skarmory. Oh, so Especially in Colosseum. I think Skarmory in Colosseum, by the time you get it, is mostly utility. You're using it for metal sound or your fast drill pack. Yeah. Maybe fast steel wing. Fortress is sort of just there to wall everything. Okay. It yeah. has it has protect. It's a decent user of like some physical moves. It's an okay user of earthquake. If for some reason, none of your other Pokemon at that point use it. Okay. I just. I think it's good as a stalling Pokemon, while Skarmory is definitely more of just fast metal sound, fast drill pack. Yeah. So where are we reckoning to put it? High A, low S? I think high yeah. A is fine. Yeah, I would say like mid A personally, but high A is cool. I'm I think this placement works. If you ever get in like a tight situation, Explosion is always beautiful on this thing. Explosion yeah. protect especially. Okay, time for the Gauntlet of Suck. Who wants to talk about <laughs> these last three Pokemon? Why are we ending the tier list with these? What the crap uh, is this game? <laughs> Murkrow, Murkrow is actually unique in that it is a victim of being Gen 3, but not because of its... Just because it doesn't get Prankster yet. And, like, you have Umbreon. Do you... And you... Like, I feel like I, Sneasel is better than Murkrow just because Sneasel is faster. Like I, I think Murkrow, Murkrow definitely belongs in oh, F. Dude. I'm just Mur saying, Murkrow. Uh, I don't know. If Prankster existed in Gen Three, this would be like a high tier Pokemon. True. It's either top of F or bottom of D. I am a. We're yeah. saying that this is worse than Ledian. It gets stab fly, gets stab faint attack. This thing's attacking power is okay. It obviously is like ridiculously frail. Because like, like, why you put you never put in this in your party unless you've lost Umbreon. And if you've lost Umbreon, you've really just screwed yourself. And yeah. you're getting this instead of Granbull, Fortress, or Flygon. That's my. That's why I'd put it below Ledian because you're getting this instead of things that are good. Yeah, like Murkrow is like a last resort Pokemon. <laughs> I, I I'm putting I, it top of D. That's my thought. That's where I'd rank it. The top of D. Bottom. I'm at bottom of D. Bottom of D. Okay. I mean, I put it around where like Yanma yeah, is or like Ariados, but I I I think like even like Ariados hits hard. Murkrow, and I don't think Murkrow like Murkrow has Nightshade. So it can do like decent damage. I never worry about this thing when I'm fighting because it can it can't crit with Nightshade. Nightshade's the only thing that really does like noteworthy damage from this Pokemon. 
That's my opinion. I mean, has Fan Attack. I feel like Fan Attack is alright. I mean, Fan Attack so probably does more than Nightshade. Yeah, for sure. I don't actually oh. see it use Fan Attack all that often. I think I almost, oh, I always see it use Nightshade. And I mean, I, don't know. I just think it's bad. I don't have much more thought. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely super bad. It's just a conversation of like, how bad is this thing? I think I, it's around like Yanma, but I'm. It's another issue of where I'm not gonna like spend two minutes arguing. I'm stuff. yeah. But, I'm fine putting it like between Yanma and Ledian. I would honestly probably consider it to be as bad as Ledian, not worse, but as bad as Ledian. I'll, I can accept that. Chill with that. Yeah. Deli Bird and Sunflora. That oh wait. The, oh I I forgot something went wrong with my image for Heracross in this game. So I have no uh, Heracross image. So we can end this two on something yeah. that doesn't suck. So that's good. Uh, these are the two Pokemon that you get that aren't Heracross, and that already is bad. Yeah. I, like, they both have decent utility because Delibird has Attract in its move kit. So if you just, te you give it Attract already and you you use your Attract TM from Venus on something of the opposite gender, it's not the worst. I'm not putting either of these higher than C tier, if they even reach C tier, personally. I don't think they do. <laughs> I don't have an opinion on Delibird because the jerk wouldn't stay in the Pokeball. Oh yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, I mean, if you in terms of Ice type, Sneasel is faster. Delibird probably has better special attack. I'm not actually sure. Delibird has utility, but so does Sneasel. But like, I don't know. I say it's as bad as Sneasel. Delibird. Delibird. Has special attack. Delibird has funny potential. 665. I mean, it has attract. Uh, this is, this is like such a missed opportunity because like it could have had like some niche maybe if they put like aerial ace on this thing with like hustle. Yeah. Um, yeah, this thing is just I don't know. I don't think I ever use this thing. It just is so bad. Ice flying is like kind of like yeah. Booty, to be honest. I will, Sorry, I will say thing. your Pokemon sucks. It it has the potential to be very funny content though if you use present on your own Pokemon to gamble. On. <laughs> of a heal. Okay. Like, that's content. Sure. Content. I put Sunflora above Daily Bird. Def I'd say Sunflora goes in like top of C tier. I mean, top of D or or bottom of C because like it can fill a similar role that Meganium would on a party. You just get it too late and it's not Heracross. Yeah, I think for Sunflora to be worthy of C. You very much have to rely on the opponent setting up the sun. <laughs> mm. Or, or like, you, you teach your Sunny Day to your Espeon uh, or something. Yeah. yeah, but then you have to, like, guarantee that Espeon's not being hit that turn. Fair. I feel like a scenario and, where you could set up Sunny Day, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would put it bottom of C. I'm not asking for a much with bottom of C. I'd put it there. I I'm, I'd give that to you, yeah. And now yeah. the, the unimaged Heracross that future editing me is going to have to worry about putting in there. Uh, I would definitely put this at least A tier. I, I'm fine with A tier. I think getting it really late is unfortunate, especially when it has a four times weakness to flying going into the final uh, gauntlet of trainers where Naskauer has Azatu a drill pack. Sizzle mm. with Aerial Ace. Or a Slacking with Aerial Ace. With and Aerial a Salamence with Aerial Ace. Did you know that Drill uh, Pet from Zatu doesn't actually one-shot this thing? Even if it doesn't, it what? just... Zatu is faster and just follows up. Uh, yeah. Bro, is that actually true? I have I observed so. it. I have gotten hit by a Drill Peck with Zatu and not died. I was using Endure so I wouldn't have died anyway, but it left me with like 21 HP. Heracross is built really cool because it has it it, it in my, it's always had swarm for me so it has endure reversal and swarm boosted megahorn and you can kind of just go crazy in the if you can set yourself up correctly I can see it I can see it especially benefiting well if you're able to like agility baton pass into it just getting it a boost in speed would help a lot with that True yeah but I just don't I don't see it as as great an asset as it would be if you get it earlier, just because you're getting it right before Drill Peg Zatu 
Aerial Ace Salamence and Aerial Ace Slacking. We say all yeah. of this, but we also defended putting Metacham in A tier for being so good in the late game, so I'd put it below Metacham, but I'd still put it A tier. I think that's fine. It's definitely A tier. It's a great Pokemon. It's just, like, unfortunate how late you get it. And that's, that's Thing valid. This thing is quad weak to flying, which I yeah. think. Uh, yeah. Okay, you know, that makes my argument fall on its head. So it definitely goes below Metacham. For sure. Uh, I think it also doesn't get as many moves as Metacham as far as, like, type coverage goes. It has Megahorn and Brick Break and Reversal. Like, it's Let's actually get still break, break, like, normally, which is, like, really good, actually. Yeah, getting that as, like, a move on purification break. is... I mean, it's pretty uh, good into... It's actually really good into Gonzap. Um, I, I have used well, it in Gonzap, yeah. Most fighting types are good into Gonzap, for what it's worth. His team is very weak to fighting. Yeah, except for Pinsir, yeah. Hey, everyone, this is Future Editing Wandering Bard here. Uh, the conversation from here kind of devolved into us discussing the various boss fights in this game, and we never recorded a proper ending to the video. So, if you did get this far in the video, thank you so much for watching, and a special thank you to Abox and Winter for recording this with me. Their channels are linked on my homepage and in the description of this video if you want to check out their stuff. It's really special for me to not only be able to share this game that I grew up on, with people on YouTube, but also to be able to connect and collaborate with other creators on videos for it. So looking forward to doing more with them in the future. Really hope you guys enjoy watching, and if you want to see those when they come out, like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. I'll see ya.